Sometimes I wonder that whenever any patient come to my chamber and more or less uh, a large number of them always say doctor sir mera thyroid hai uh, which means the doctor i have thyroid now thyroid is an endocrine gland everybody has thyroid does anybody while going to a heart specialist cardiologist when the doctor ask what's your problem will anybody say doctor sir mera ek heart hai or say for instance when you go to see an eye specialist and if the doctor ask what's your difficulty would you say doctor i have two eyes so this is what was bothering me and so i decided that i would increase this awareness about this gland thyroid gland which secretes hormone and it is not that i have thyroid what are the diseases of thyroid hello there i am dr purnendu roy i am a surgeon in genesis hospital and you have understood correct today we are going to discuss thyroid diseases the thyroid gland is actually a butterfly shaped organ which is located in front of the neck this is in front of the trachea in the neck and in there is a thyroid cartilage and there are two lobes the right lobe and the left lobe and which is connected by an isthmus now thyroid is an endocrine gland and what's an endocrine gland endocrine gland are glands in our body which pours its secretions directly into the blood and these are called hormones other than thyroid we have other endocrine glands in our body like parathyroid adrenal pituitary glands and testes and ovary as opposed to endocrine gland exocrine glands are glands which pours its secretion via a duct either into a lumen or intestinal tract or it pours to the exterior or outside like say liver pancreas parotid gland submandibular gland or even lacrimal where tears come out and even sweat glands so today we are not going to talk about exocrine gland and among the endocrine glands today we start off with thyroid the thyroid gland secretes two hormones one is t3 which is triiodothyronine and t4 which is thyroxine now these numbers 3 and 4 indicate the number of iodine atom in a molecule of the hormone the secretion of this t3 and t4 is controlled by pituitary which secretes a hormone called tsh thyroid stimulating hormone when in the blood the level of thyroxine t3 or t4 goes down the pituitary secretes more tsh which stimulates the thyroid so that more hormone is secreted and if this hormone goes high then by inhibition feedback it suppresses the tsh secretion so that it does not stimulate the thyroid so that's the balance which is maintained and the tsh in turn is also controlled by a hormone from the hypothalamus trh thyrotropin releasing hormone so it's basically this balance is maintained by pituitary and hypothalamus so how does this thyroid hormone act in the body it acts by increasing the body's metabolism it increases appetite it increases digestions breakdown of food and absorption of the nutrients in the process to maintain this uh, increase metabolic activity energy is required and the body produces more heat and it increases oxygen consumption so breathing increases breathing rate increases and also the heart rate increases and the contraction of the heart increases 
in winter season thyroid secretions increases to a level so that the body can protect by generating heat so there are two types of hormonal imbalance or problem that can happen which means if more hormone is secreted this is called hyperthyroidism and if the less hormone is secreted it's called hypothyroidism so now on when you go to a doctor and you are a thyroid patient you don't go and tell doctor i have thyroid you have to say whether you are hyperthyroid or hypothyroid so in hypothyroidism the hormone secretions are less so there is a low metabolic rate and that will decrease the heart rate decrease respiratory rate so the symptoms which patients will complain about is fatigue this they don't feel like doing activity they have a low appetite but start gaining weight they have cold intolerance sometimes in severe hypothyroidism they can develop swelling of the feet and it's called myxedema and when you press over there there is pitting edema in the anterior side of the leg there will be excessive menstrual bleeding and they will complain about constipation on examination their heart rate will be slow or rather low heart rate the causes for hypothyroidism will be iodine deficiency now iodine is one thing which is necessary for the synthesis of the hormone whether it is triiodothyronine or thyroxine t3 and t4 so the areas where people used to see lot of thyroid problem in the sub himalayan belts because there is iodine deficiency in over there nowadays probably it is not seen as high because many of the salts are now iodized so with the iodized salt we don't see that amount of iodine deficiency among people the other cause is hashimoto's thyroiditis now what's thyroiditis we know itis is a type of inflammation like we talk about conjunctivitis when it is in the eye or appendicitis if it is in the appendix thyroiditis is a type of a autoimmune disease when body's own immune mechanism destroys by a reaction in the thyroid gland and then the thyroid can't produce sufficient amount of t3 and t4 so how do the body reacts to this deficiency of iodine so deficiency of iodine has caused that we are not able to produce sufficient t3 t4 so now once the blood level of these hormones are low pituitary response by increasing tsh secretion thyroid stimulating hormone so thyroid is not able to produce the hormone and the tsh is stimulating the thyroid gland so the thyroid gland increases in size and this is what is called goiter now when the goiter is a diffuse swelling of the gland that's a generalized goiter and sometimes some multiple nodules can be seen in the thyroid gland in case if it is not treated over a long period and sometimes they are called multi nodular goiter now the question comes is we have understood the symptoms we have seen the pathophysiology and how it happens so how are we going to diagnose very simple you do a blood level of t3 t4 and tsh if the tsh level is high and this t3 t4 is low which directly indicates that the thyroid is not working properly and it is producing less of the hormone so how do you treat again that's also very simple we give them thyroxine tablets so these tablets supplements the hormone level and the patient is taken care of and repeated monitoring of the tsh level has to be done in the follow up period so now we come back to what is 
hyperthyroidism. So when there is increased production of this T3 and T4, that's hyperthyroidism. And in these cases, because T3, T4 is high, it will suppress the pituitary to produce TSH or suppress the TSH secretion. So in the blood level, whenever T3, T4 is high, TSH level will be very low. What are the symptoms with which the patient is going to come? Because they will have increased heart rate and they will have increased respiratory rate also. And the metabolism will be very high. So they will have irritability. They will have insomnia, not able to sleep in the night. They're going to complain of losing weight in spite of having a good appetite. They will have intolerance towards heat. They will, because the body is generating so much of heat, increased metabolism, and they would prefer to stay with air condition and won't be able to tolerate warm weather. They will also have complain of increased bowel movements and they can complain of diarrhea. This increased secretions of thyroid hormones is one of the commonest cause is Graves' disease. Now, this is also another type of autoimmune disorder in which there is a thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin which is secreted and like TSH, it stimulates the thyroid gland which produces excessive amount of T3 and T4 but it is not having a control of negative feedback of TSH. So now what happens is excessive amount of T3 and T4 causes all the symptoms of this and TSI, which is thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin, also stimulates a thyroid so you can get a goiter increase size. So how do we diagnose? Just like hypothyroidism, this is also very simple. Do a blood test and do T3, T4 and TSH. And from the level we can understand that is increased amount of thyroid hormone T3, T4 in the circulation. There's another associated conditions in these kind of Graves disease or hyperthyroidism. It's called exophthalmic goiter. Now here goiter is also associated with the eyeball protruding outside with very staring look like this. And that is because there is some amount of adipose tissue, tissue deposition in the retrobulbar area behind the eyeball, pushing the eyeball in forward. Now, in severe cases of hyperthyroidism, there can be thyrotoxic gosis or thyrotoxic crisis. Now, these are situations which can become as an emergency. As a surgeon, why do we need to know about thyroid? Because now it has become mandatory any person going for any surgery should have the thyroid TSH level measured. Because if the person is hypothyroid, which means they are not secreting enough thyroid hormones, they have difficulty in reversing from anesthesia. It may take a long time to get back into senses. And the, if a person is hyperthyroid, during surgery, they may go into thyrotoxic crisis where the heart rate, breathing and everything goes to such an high level that it becomes a major emergency going giving rise to any arrhythmias and heart and cardiac problem. So how do we treat hyperthyroidism? There are antithyroid drugs, oral medications, and these decreases the effect of the thyroid hormone on metabolism. And we can also use radioactive iodine. Now, radioactive iodine, when it is given, it's taken up by the thyroid tissue and it actually destroys the thyroid tissue, lowering the thyroid activity. And the third option is surgery. When uh, part of the thyroid gland is taken away, 
Now there are types of surgery, subtotal thyroidectomy, in which case the thyroid tissue is removed so that the amount of thyroid hormone secretion in the blood is lowered. Today, we learned only about the hormonal aspect of the thyroid gland, which means increased secretion and decreased secretion, which is hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism. There are other aspects of the thyroid also, which is thyroid tumor, and we will discuss in another episode about the different types of thyroid tumor that we come across. And if you really liked watching the video, if you have become aware about thyroid, please tell your friends, share the video, subscribe to my channel, and let everybody else know about how important thyroid is. Thank you very much for watching my video.